Kidders, today we're going to talk about molarity. Um, molarity is a type or a way to find the concentration of something. Concentration of something basically means how much of one thing is in the total. Okay, so like, you know, we could say, hey, there's, uh, there's allergens in the air today, and maybe we can measure them in a parts per billion or parts per million concentration to say for every billion parts of, or every billion air molecules, there are this many parts of this specific allergen. That's a type of concentration. So the concentration that matters the most to us in chemistry is molarity. So, so what molarity is, is molarity is a measure of how many moles of the solute. Now remember, the solute is the thing that's dissolved into another thing in a solution. So in a solution, remember, you have something, one substance dissolved in another substance. So the solute is the substance being dissolved the solvent would be the substance that's doing the dissolving, and the two of them together are the solution, okay? So the molarity then is moles of solute divided by the liters of the solution. In other words, how much stuff is dissolved compared to the total. Most concentrations work in a similar fashion to this. We'll see that sometimes it's not always the solution on the bottom, sometimes it's the solvent or something like that. But in the case of molarity, it is specifically moles of solute over liters of solution. Okay, so problem one, what is the molarity of a solution that has 21.2 grams of sodium chloride dissolved to form 750 milliliters of solution? It could be worded differently. This is probably the more correct way. Sometimes it might say um, in 750 milliliters of water. Here's the thing, with a relatively small amount of solute, dissolved in a pretty big amount of solvent, um, that doesn't really matter that much. We could have easily said it's dissolved in 750 milliliters of water. But sometimes we could have a really large amount of the solute and that would change the amount of solution. So if we had 750 milliliters of water, but I had, assume, this isn't even possible to dissolve, but if I had like 500 grams of sodium chloride, then that would make the solution a lot bigger than 750 and then Therefore, that would affect everything. So properly speaking, we would say that it's going to make 750 milliliters of solution. Now, you might notice that there are two things that give us a little bit of an issue here. One of them is that I don't have moles, I have grams. And the second one is that I don't have liters, I have milliliters. So the liter thing is a lot easier to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and convert that and say that I've got 0 0.750 liters, okay? So that means I've got what I need for the bottom. I've already converted that, no problem. Remember, how did I do that conversion? Staircase, one, two, three, decimal places. Go back and review that if you need to. To find moles from grams, though, remember that requires molar mass. So let's work that real quick. So to be able to convert grams into moles, we need to know the molar mass of sodium chloride. To do that, we would pull up our periodic table. We would see that sodium has a mass of 23.0. Um, grams per mole and that chlorine has a mass of 35.45 or 35.5. Sort of depends on where you want to keep the decimal place. Generally speaking, you should always keep at least one decimal place when you're doing molar mass. You can keep two. Um, that's probably the norm is to go down to the hundredths place. So I'm going to do a real quick molar mass conversion here then to turn my grams of sodium chloride into moles. So one mole of sodium chloride is those two molar masses added together, which is gonna be 58.45 grams. And we're gonna punch that in our calculator to get our answer. So that's our moles of sodium chloride. So in other words, that's the top part. I've got moles and I have liters. Now you might be asking yourself, why didn't you round that? I mean, couldn't you have rounded that to sig figs there and rounded it to 0.362? So I could have, but here's why you should. Um, if you want to do your final rounding for sig figs at the end of the problem, like after you've done all the work, um, and since I'm probably plugging all this into the calculator, and since I have this, this number in the calculator, and I could easily just plug in divided by that, which is what I'm gonna do, I don't really need to round it here, and in fact, I don't want to because I might lose something if I round it at each successive step. That, of course, is why when we're doing conversion factors and train tracks, you don't really want to round after each step or break it up each step. You want to do it all at once and then do one rounding at the end. So next step then is to divide this moles by our liters. So 
750 liters. Now you'll notice that I didn't reset up the problem. I didn't write it out as molarity and then moles and liters. You could do all of that, but I had to convert to moles. That gave me this. I'm going to divide it by liters. That equals my molarity, if that makes you feel better. We're going to plug that in, and our answer is going to be 7.5. So there's our numerical answer in the calculator. I do want three sig figs in this case. Why do I want three? Well, I've got three here, and I've got three here. In other words, both of my givens give me three sig figs. So that means I'm going to round to there. So my correct answer is 0.483. And you could write it in two ways. Molarity is capital M. You could also write it as moles per liter. Those mean the same thing. Molarity would probably be the more correct way because that's the way that you would see stuff labeled. If you went in the chemical cabinet, what you would probably see is a solution labeled with a capital M. That's molarity. Okay. So that's how to solve for molarity. The question, of course, that anytime you see any sort of equation where you've got multiple variables is, what do I do if the problem doesn't ask me for molarity, it asks me for something else? So let's do that. All right, so problem two, how many moles are in a 26.2 milliliter sample of 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide? In this case, we're looking for something different. I already know the molarity and I have a volume, but what I'm looking for is how many moles of the solute. In fact, this is really common. In fact, to make it more common, what it probably should say, and what you're a lot more, probably more likely to see is, how many grams of sodium hydroxide do I need to make a certain volume of a certain concentration acid? We're gonna work it out this way just so you can see it, and then I'll explain the next step if you needed it um, in that particular case. So since we know the molarity and the volume, I'm going to go ahead and just set this up in equation form. That's my molarity. I am looking for moles. So I'm going to put x moles. I know the volume. Now, again, that volume is in milliliters. We can actually plug in milliliters, and then we would just solve for millimoles instead of moles. But the problem specifically asks for moles, so we'll solve for that. Um, so to get there then, we're going to convert that. One, two, three decimal places gives me 0 0.0262 liters. Okay? And then we're just going to plug that into our calculator. We're going to get an answer in moles. So punch that in our calculator. That, and when I said punch that in your calculator, obviously there's a step of algebra to be done there. Multiply that times that. That gets x by itself. And so we're going to get 0 0.00262 moles of sodium hydroxide. Again, if the problem had asked what it very often would ask, which is what's the mass or how much of it do you need and you needed it in grams, you would just take that number, do a quick conversion with the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, and you would get the grams that you need out of that. Those kind of problems are, are relatively common. So for problem number three, what is the volume of a 0 0.250 molar um, nitric acid required to supply 0.5 moles of that nitric acid? What that is likely an example of is some sort of titration problem where you're trying to figure out an equivalent number of moles or, or a certain number of moles that you're trying to neutralize or something like that. So that's pretty common also. Very often, though, of course, you would do the experiment, you would get the volume, and you would try to, be, try to determine the moles, sort of like we did in the last uh, problem. But I wanted you to see one work each way. So I have molarity, I have moles, I need to solve for volume. So let's set that up. So our setup here is we've got 0 0.250, that's my molarity, I've got my moles, I'm looking for my volume down here. The algebra here is gonna be a little bit more complicated and I'll go ahead and walk us through that one real quick because these are the ones that a once in a while will cause a student a problem. We're gonna multiply both sides by x liters. Okay, um, that's gonna cancel that out over here, that's gonna leave us with x liters times my molarity equals that, and so then we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.250 molar. Okay, and you could tell without even using a calculator what your answer is going to be there. X liters is going to be 2.00 liters. You might be asking yourself again, why would you put those two zeros after that? Well, everything here had three significant figures. One, two, three, one, two, three. Remember the leading zeros don't count. So my final answer to, to reflect accurately the precision according to sig figs would be 
liters, that is the volume that would be needed. In other words, that's a pretty big volume. That would be several burettes full if we were doing titrations. So that probably not the case. If we're doing titrations, we're not usually doing a whole half mole of something. And if we were, we'd have probably have a lot higher concentration um, of that substance than we've got there. So that's concentrations. Again, for most of you all, that's just a quick reminder of what you probably already knew how to do, but I wanted to make sure that you didn't completely forget it um, from the previous year. We're going to talk about other concentrations in the future as well, but molarity is the big megilla. That's the one that we really need the most. All right. Thanks, kiddos.